Hello everyone, I am Edwin Hernandez, class of press specialist at Chip Diver. Welcome to the second episode of this video series. In the last episode, we created a table configurator by using traditional grasshopper components. And now we will be adding two special components from the Ship Diver plugin, which will allow users to import their own geometry into the definition. If you didn't see the last episode, I recommend you to do so. We will leave the link in the description. All of these techniques and all what we are explaining can be applied to any definition that you are creating. All the files that we are gonna use for this tutorial are available down below in the description, including the grasshopper file. So let's get started. So here we can see uh, the table at Sheet Diver, and here we have the table in grasshopper. The only difference in this definition to the one that we had in the last episode is that I have organized everything into groups uh, with its uh, respective um, description. So very important again to keep everything organized and to work in, if you have a team or something, it's very important to have everything with descriptions of what's going on in each group. Here, for example, we have all the, in each group we have inputs and outputs, and nothing goes out of this group or in, in the middle. So you don't see cables coming in or out through the middle of the group. And the same happens with the rest of the, of the groups where we are creating the tabletop uh, B-Rap, the apron B-Rap, and the legs B-Rap. So before we start optimizing this table, I want to start by uh, adding some additional parameters. So actually, right now we just have a finite amount of tabletop profiles and leg profiles. So basically, whoever is, is using this table configurator can just access these uh, profiles that we offer in our drop-down menu. But what if we wanted them to have the same power that Resopra has. So for example, we have the power here at Rhino. We can come here and create our own profile. I don't know, let's say for example, then reference that into Resopra, as you know. So we will set one cure. And then we could use that like our, our tabletop profile. So for example, I take this and I put it here and then we see the result. Then we have the same edge in the in the tabletop 3D model. So that we can do it because we have Rhino and Grasshopper, but we want Shape Diver to be the bridge for those who don't have the software or the knowledge uh, to be able to actually also be able to put there any profile that they want. And the way to do that is with the special um, inputs that we offer. If you go to our um, plugin in, into inputs, we have the Shift Diver Geometry Input. So with this one, you can actually create a button in, shape, in the Shift Diver menu where people can click and they can select either, you can see if you, do, if you double click on this component, it will tell you the kind of files that we support. So we have the XF and OVJ files. So in this case, we will like all the users of this table configurator to be able to upload their own profiles. So in this case, we don't want OVJ, OVJ will be for meshes, but in this case, we just want Cure. So that would be a DXF file. And then you can also set if you have some limit of uh, in the size of this file. So for now, the default should be okay. Then we re rename this uh, component. This name will show up in the menu in Shape Diver. So I already have some DXF file examples. So if I use the uh, file path component and then I go to select one existing file, I have some uh, examples here, some for legs, and another one's for the tabletop profile. So I take the tabletop profile, I input this, it is a local file, so it's just for local testing, but actually this will be done in a different way at Shape Diver by clicking on the button in the menu. So you input this here and then you will see here already the polyline that is being imported. Uh, so a planner cube. So if we go to the top view, we should be able to check out that curve. So here it is. So that curve, like because this is a curve that comes from outside, so we don't know this curve really. So we have to scale it and position it in the region. So that again, everything is predictable and then we can escalate depending on the material thickness. To do that, I will do some simple grasshopper orientation and scaling 
functions. Here you can see the curve. I just took the bounding box and used the bounding box to position. Based on the top left corner, I position my curve in the region. And then based on the height of my uh, original curve, then I scale it by dividing one divided this original height so that I have finally a curve that is in the region and has a height of one. So the same that we have here with all our default curves, where all of them are again in the, with the top left corner in the region of the bounding box and then also all of them are scaled to one and then what we can do is to move all of these uh, selecting of the curve that we're gonna use so we can move it So we can move all what we were doing here of picking our base profile curve, we can move it to another group where I check first through this function, I check whether there is a curve being imported, a custom curve being imported, and if there is a curve being imported then I use that curve, otherwise I use one of the default curves. So in this case I'm using a default curve because I don't have connected my uh, custom profile, but if I connect my custom profile then it will select the custom instead of the default profile curve for my tabletop. And then I will do something similar for the legs. So I can copy paste this part. Now the difference with the leg profile is that it actually can contain more than one material. So if you remember in the first tutorial we said that our leg could be something like this one where you have a glass and wood or like this one where you have two woods. So in order to do that we can actually apply different colors to our curves in a DXF. So this output that our import uh, chip diagram geometry input has is called the material output and it gives you the colors of the curves that you are importing. So for example, we could have a leg profile curve where, where you have different colors, uh, for example, a blue color and then a red color in another part of the curve. And then that means that these two parts have a different material. So if I select one of our example profiles for legs, then it gives me this list of curves. You can see here the profile of the leg, and then it also gives me a list of materials, in this case colors. So I will group my curves based on these colors. So in this case, I use the set component. The set component is going to give me the unique colors. So I have two unique colors and it's going to give me a list of indexes which represent to which color each of these curves belong. So for example, here the first curve belongs to the color zero, the second curve belongs to the color one, etc., etc., etc. And based on that, I can create a tree.
Okay, so here I'm using the um, replace paths component that by grafting these curves, I get a tree with one item in each branch. And then I'm gonna replace this branch path with the path of where these curves belongs in terms of the color. So in this case, it's gonna give me two branches, zero and one, zero for the color, the first color, and one for the second color. Then I'm gonna do the same that I did with the tabletop curves, where I'm gonna scale it and position it so that it is again in the region and with a scale one. So I have already here positioned it and scaled it. And now I just need, as we did here, where we pick the default tabletop curves. Now I'm gonna do the same with the default ones that we have for the leg profiles. So here I'm going to use the bottom left point of my uh, bounding box to position my custom profile leg curve. And finally we can see here uh, the scale, uh, this is scaled again based on the table uh, height minus the material thickness. And this is what I'm going to use as the final leg profile. So here we can check the final result with our custom leg. So here it is. So this leg is coming from a DXF that is outside of Grasshopper. It's a DXF that is coming from a file. So if I select another example profile for my leg, then we can see the other profile that is coming from outside. And now with these two uh, new parameters, our users, the users of this table configurator, will be able to have as much freedom as possible to design their table. And with this, we can start actually optimizing the table with the C Sharp components. So thank you for staying until the end of the video. If you like this video and you learned something new, please don't forget to click on that like button down below. And if you don't want to miss out the optimization of this model in the next uh, episode, please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below so we can help you out. And remember that the Grasshopper file and also the other files, the DXF files that we used in this tutorial are available in the description. See you next time.